when you see some things that are inspirational to you, when you see some things that you're like, ooh, I could do something with that, or that's inspiring me to do my own version of that, or mm. this makes me think down a certain trail, I need to capture this stuff when I'm actually not looking to employ it so that when I need to, I have something to draw from, right? I, it's, it's, I talk about this a lot in terms of not trying to draw from an empty well. And then it's like, ooh, I'm facing a block. I don't feel inspired. What is it that I'm supposed to actually create? Well, it's in that moment that if you've started to collect some things ahead of time, then you can start to open up those files or reference those things and go, okay, at one point, this was really speaking to me. What was it about that that I really found interesting or inspirational? All right, welcome to this episode of the podcast. Today, I'm excited to have my friend Mike Brennan on the show. Mike is a creator, a communicator, tells stories on pages and stages. His childhood dream was to be a cartoon. I don't know how that's going to happen. But uh, <laughs> uh, when he realized that wasn't possible, he became the next best thing, an artist. He loves sharing experiences, making connections through his art, helping fellow frustrated artists and creatives establish a daily creative habit of their own. Um, it's got a podcast called Creative Chats. I got a new book out uh, just about art made during the pandemic and uh, some Canva templates, which I actually purchased and use. Uh, we'll talk about all that in a moment. But Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks for, for jumping on with us today. Absolutely, Mike. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you're, you're, this, you're this creative and you're, you're very interesting as a creative because you're a consistent creative. Um, <laughs> yeah. You do it like you have a daily practice of creating. You, you sketch almost every single day. Um, I frame all that to say many of us who are in this business, we're creators. You're hearing that word a lot more creators, YouTube, social media, whatever yeah. it is. Um, is, is this something that like a normal everyday nine to five person who's looking to break in this, into this space, can they tap into that? They can, they, can they build that? Like how do they stop, start becoming a creative? That yeah, sense. absolutely. I get that question a lot, right? Because for a lot of people, when they think of creativity, they think of the obvious expressions of visual art or mm -hmm. film or a musician, right? The things that like people go to when they say, oh yeah, like those are the creative things, you know, in quotes. And, you know, I really try to reframe the conversation a lot of times because I believe that everybody can be creative. Mm. I think we all have different gifts and abilities. And so that creativity sometimes takes different forms, but I think we all can be creative in some way. I mean, you can be creative in how you cook your dinner, you know, recipes that you come up with. You can be creative, um, you know, with budgeting. And I'm not talking about like a legal kind, right? <laughs> we're, we're, we're all in the up and up here. But really, you know, somebody who knows numbers and knows how to budget well and knows how to, to you know, set up those systems, create systems for other people. Um, that's all part of creativity. It's, it's creating something so that it's, it's um, putting in motion something that wasn't there before. And that can take a lot of different forms. So, you know, for somebody who maybe has a nine to five, maybe they want to get creative because it's a hobby or it's something that they just feel like is a personal fulfillment. There's definitely ways that they can prioritize for that. And as well as if it's somebody who is like, you know what, I'm really interested in maybe making a shift or a pivot into something and maybe going full time with my creativity or at least seeing what's possible. Um, but yet that seems like such a, a huge leap to do that. Um, so I love getting into those conversations with people all the time. So what's like a strategy where you help people who, who might stumble with like a creative process or like, I, I need to be more creative. Like, where does that even start? Right. So for, for me, it started with, you know, I was, I was a, as a kid, like you said, you know, uh, in my bio there, I wanted to be a cartoon when I was younger, right? <laughs> I loved cartoons and art so much that I just wanted to be it. I didn't even want to just create it. So some people don't have those experiences. Some people are more either finding things later in life or they're, um, it's not as obvious to them. And so for them, it's really a lot about exploring and figuring out what's of interest to them and giving themselves opportunity to lean into that, right? Because so often we think, well, the, the road has to just be really, really clear before us and it has to be easy. And then when I get on it, 
it has to just be all green lights. Um, but, but we know that from other areas in our lives, that's not the way that things happen. And so we shouldn't take that mentality into trying to express creativity either. So really simply, if you are somebody who's thinking like, I want to push into my creativity, but I just don't know what that looks like. Then I would say a couple of things. One, start small, right? Don't try to sit down and create some masterpiece. Um, a lot of artists and creative people even fall into that, that category where they think I need to sit down and create the masterpiece so that it's, you know, it's going to sell for a million dollars or it's going to hang in a museum or whatever it is that they hope is some kind of outcome. And then they get crushed when they're in that process and they're like, Ooh, this is going South. You know, this is not at all living up to what I thought it would be. And so lower the bar, understand that even the masters had work that, wasn't part of their highlight reel, which is why we call them the masters, right? That's what we're seeing, you know, ancient highlight reels. (laughs) So understanding that even those people had missteps and mistakes Mm -hmm. and things that were failures. uh, And and that's part of our process, part of everybody's process. So if we can lower the bar a little bit and say, can I take five or 10 minutes a day, if that's all I can manage, what can I do with that five or 10 minutes to really maximize and leverage it for my creativity. And again, lower the bar so that if you're interested in sketching or drawing, figure out maybe it's, it's something like five or 10 minutes part of your lunch hour or a commute or something else that you're doing where you can steal that time and be very focused on that task and start to explore and leave it Mm -hmm. a little open as far as the end result, because it's really more at that point about your exploration and understanding than it is about the actual, if you will, final product, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about motivation? Like I hear a lot of people ask about motivation and they're like, I don't feel motivated. What do you say to that? Yeah. I mean, motivation is kind of a funny thing because so many times it's a problem for so many people. They're, they're stuck, right? They're stuck in the place where they're like, I need to move forward. I don't know how to do this. And so uh, really what we need is like a catalyst to really get us moving and then a system that keeps you moving. Right. Because Typically, motivation will come when we recognize that like, hey, there's a bigger goal that we want to achieve. There's something that we want to see happen in um, our creativity. And then that's not enough just to have that catalyst. Then we need some kind of system that keeps us showing up, right? So for me, when I talk about daily creative habit, really that's what a habit is. It's a system that we employ to achieve certain outcome. Uh, and sometimes those things, right, can be bad or good. It's, it's kind of a, a neutral thing. But in this case, we're really trying to leverage it so that we have this catalyst, we have the system in place, and then it's bringing the motivation. Um, then we can start to see how if we show up at this certain time every single day, um, because we know we want to get better at this, we know that it's, it's a worthy goal that we have, um, and it's going to make a huge difference for us. Then we have the system we can start to employ and then we get the motivation to keep showing up because we start to see some results. We start to see some wins. And um, that's when things really come alive for us, right? When we start to say, I see that what I'm doing is starting to make a difference. I'm starting to see some results and that's what drives us on even further. Yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of, uh, it's very counterintuitive because I, I probably, I'm probably not alone a lot of people hear about blocking out time to be creative or work on creative work. And then I'm like, as soon as I see that thing on the calendar, I'm like, my brain's like, no, you're too tired (laughs) to do that. Just skip it. Right. Yes. Yes. And then Stephen King, I think years ago in his book on writing, uh, shared with the world that, I mean, he basically wakes up, goes down to his computer and just writes for several hours. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, that just does not sound very fun. And it sounds like you're just slogging through it. But I love what you said before about starting small. Mm-hmm. And I remember, and this may help some of you who are even looking at social media, there's so much to do on social media, almost so much, right? Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever. And uh, in the last year, I tried to get a little bit more active with YouTube. And to your point, I didn't, I didn't try to create a masterpiece overnight on mm-hmm. YouTube. I don't know how to run a, work a camera or edit video. I still don't know how to do that stuff. <laughs> so I just took my one minute videos from Instagram and posted on YouTube and it just kept lowering the bar, you know, <laughs> and it just kept making me feel like, okay, a few people watch this on YouTube, like five, 
people watched it or seven people watched it. And then next thing I know, 40 people watched it and just slowly going there. I'm just sharing that as a fellow creative on this journey. It's like, you got to be willing to, to put yourself out there. And I like what you're saying about, you know, that creative habit. Like, I think I'm creating every day because I'm posting something or creating some sort of marketing content every day. Now, what happens if like that motivation or inspiration, I don't know if they're the same thing. What happens when you are facing a lack of inspiration? Like, oh my gosh, okay, I don't want to do my YouTube channel anymore. I don't want to work on Instagram anymore. What do you do there? Right. Well, I mean, there is that point of which we need to surround ourselves with stuff that's feeding us, right? We need Mm -hmm. to to be having intake. Um, But I think when we rely on the muse too much, it's a dangerous place for us to be because we, we will then start to frame our conversations, we'll start to frame our thinking and our expectations around that muse. And the muse can be finicky, right? We all know that. It's, it's not something that just shows up, um, you know, when we want it to. And um, it's really about the habit of, of actually capturing uh, also. And that's what, what I mean by that is, like when, you're, when you see some things that are inspirational to you, when you see some things that you're like, ooh, I could do something with that, or that's inspiring me to do my own version of that, or Hmm. this makes me think down a certain trail, I need to capture this stuff when I'm actually not looking to employ it so that when I need to, I have something to draw from, right? I I talk about this a lot in terms of not trying to draw from an empty well, Um, but it's capturing all this stuff ahead of time so that all of a sudden, if you find yourself like staring at a blank page or a blank canvas, you know, you've, you've set up all the parameters. You have your time blocked out, you have your materials, you have everything, you sit down and then it's like, Ooh, I'm facing a block. I don't feel inspired. What is it that I'm supposed to actually create? Well, it's in that moment that if you've started to collect some things ahead of time, then you can start to open up those files or reference those things and go, okay, at one point, this was really speaking to me. What was it about that that I really found interesting or inspirational? Um, back from my advertising days, and you know, we had this thing that we used to call a swipe file. And um, I always thought it was kind of a funny, funny thing, but then it was actual like an actual folder, right? Physical folder. And people would just tear out things from magazines. You know, uh, they would, there's certain typefaces that they liked from uh, other ads, or there were um, just certain color schemes and things. You know, we refer to this today as like a mood board or a vision board, right? Um, the same kind of concept where they're collecting this stuff, knowing that one day this may be useful. Um, but it's not relying on that all in the moment because then it's too much pressure. You can't just like think I'm going to sit down and be thinking about all my influences and inspiration and the creative process, everything all at once. Cause that's when you get overwhelmed. I love that. Um, especially about capturing the thoughts. I, I've never really talked about this with anyone, but I'm realizing I've somewhat stumbled into this. And now that you've mentioned this, I'm going to make even more of an effort to do it. Um, I'd often screenshot things on my phone of ads that really spoke to me. I have a whole Evernote file called quotes Mm -hmm. and these are just one liners, you know, that I've read in books or whatnot. And when I've had to create these one minute videos on Instagram, right? Micro content or whatnot, I don't sit down and try to think of something. I just open that file and just read these things and just riff on it. So I'll knock out like four or five of these within, you know, 45 minutes, you know, various takes. And then those are all those one minute Instagram videos that I post. Yeah. And, uh, and then I can actually batch the content. So I'm not every day worried about or feeling this anxiety that I need to put something out there because it's Monday or whatnot. Um, and it, it actually allows me to get way ahead, um, of the content creation schedule. And I don't think anybody knows. Yeah. I don't think anybody can tell. Um, the difference. I think making time to create is one of those things that I've really had to bend my will to because I I was what you described, mm-hmm. somebody who just relied on the muse. And uh, man, I tell you what, working on a book the last, you know, what seems like five years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just had to get it done. Like inspiration would not come sometimes. I wrote probably half of that book on my phone while mm-hmm. waiting in an Uber or something like that. But I needed to block the time. Can you share a little bit more about how you help people or what you say to people who are struggling to create time or find time? Yeah, well, and I'm glad that you used that phrase, find time, because I think that's where most of us fall 
is we think we need to find the time. But the reality is we actually have to prioritize for the time. It's not finding it because you know as well as anybody, you're never really going to find time because there's always so many demands. And we'll, ha we'll fill our time with as much stuff as we possibly can until we reach a point where we're like, okay, I'm exhausted. I need a timeout. Hang on. You know, I got to take a break, a vacation, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so this whole thing of thinking that we're magically going to all of a sudden find time for this um, isn't the case. And so we need to prioritize. And how do we prioritize things? Well, we schedule it, right? Um, if we have a very important doctor's appointment, we put it on the calendar and we make sure that we're like, I need to show up for that because that's really important. Or if there's some kind of party or you know, whatever it is that's important, we put it on the calendar. We make sure that we protect that. And we say nothing else is going to get into this time slot because when I'm at that, that appointment, that's my priority. And so we need to start thinking about our creativity in the same terms because when we allow you know, too much room and too much flex and, and we just try and kind of go with the flow, it, it's not going to work, right? Um, we'll end up drifting. We'll end up places that we never intended to be. Or worse, we never end up sitting down to begin with because we just keep putting it off tomorrow, next week. Uh, when I find the time, I'll get into it. So I always say, put it on the calendar. And then even if you have to like rearrange something, it's easier to rearrange something that's there rather than to just have something that's kind of this ethereal when I find the time, I'll, I'll get into it, you know? Um, and, and sometimes that's a matter of also understanding that like our creativity isn't just used for our final product, if you will, but sometimes our creativity is actually employed in how we're managing our time and our process and how we show up day in and day out. Um, sometimes we need to get creative with that. So like I mentioned before, you know, maybe it's utilizing time that you have in a commute or a lunch hour or figuring out, you know, like for me, I used to steal time when I was in, in line, like grocery store lines or, or other places where I'm like, oh, this is, this is frustrating, right? I'm standing here for like maybe 10 minutes. There's nothing else I can do except maybe like scowl at people around me, right? <laughs> or, or, you know, curse the fact that I went on this line as opposed to that line because that one's going quicker, right? So instead of doing all that stuff or just completely checking out, being on my phone, looking at the headlines and the tabloids, whatever, what if I took that 10 minutes and I have a portable sketchbook with me and I start just sketching, you know, I sketch some people who are on the line or I sketch some other things that I'm seeing or record, you know, some color schemes that I really like for something that I may want to use later, like start redeeming those moments that may be wasted. And that's just as much a part of creativity as it is in sitting down and doing a painting or, or writing something mm -hmm. or producing something, you know? Yeah. A lot of my social media content I've created during an Uber ride. Yeah. or waiting for the plane to take off, you know, before my, you know, Wi-Fi, I have to shut down my Wi-Fi on my phone. Throughout the day, uh, most people may not know this. I don't post my in, like social media stories, like Instagram stories in real time. I gather them throughout the day. Like, mm -hmm. so my, my, my album on my phone is like, it's, it's just way <laughs> too much stuff in there. Right. Because it saves your phone. But then I go in later and I post them when I get, you know, back to my room get back to the house or, you know, get to the hotel or have a moment to breathe, or I'll do it in the car, like do it in Uber and I'll post all of them at once. Um, that's how I've stayed sort of like, I don't know, consistent with it. Sure. Um, what about like finding your voice in your art? We hear, I hear, I get a lot of that in terms of like here, find your voice in your writing. Uh, yeah. And then of course, you know, the answer is, well, you won't find it until you use it. Now, I, I think that's true. Do you, do you see other things that can help people find their voice or their own style, especially art? Like yeah. I used to draw a lot. Um, and it's funny because I didn't really like my own art. I didn't really like my own style. Like, yeah. is there anything you can speak to when it comes to that? Yeah, and I think that that's, that's common. And even in my own journey, right? I think I related to that a lot too because in the beginning, like I was so petrified to do my own work, especially when I was in a group of my peers for, you know, being in art school, mm. the, the dreaded critique, right? Put your art up on the wall and everybody have a turn talking about it and kind of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> assessing it. That was like, you know, again, petrifying. And, and 
you know, a lot of too of why I actually ended up going into graphic design as opposed to illustration or fine art was mm. some of my own insecurities around what I was able to produce, right? So for me, the benchmark was photorealism when I was younger and I couldn't mm. do photorealism. So therefore mm. I told myself, well, I'm not a real artist. I'm not like a fine artist or an illustrator because I can't do that. And so I said, okay, well, I can do graphic design. I like color schemes. I like all the design principles and things like that. And so that kind of steered my early career. But I think when you start to realize that you have something you want to say and, you know, client work isn't necessarily the right avenue for that, but you need some place for that to get out. And then you need it to get out in such a way that it has your fingerprints all over it, maybe literally, right? <laughs> so for me, it was a lot of experimenting and playing. I needed to figure out what is it that I'm really interested in and not just say I'm interested in, right? Not just clinging onto something because it gives me an answer, but making sure that I've probed enough and I've done enough um, just self-work, right? Um, to, to know who I am, to know what I'm really interested in and the things that I really have to offer, not just that will, will make me feel like I'm doing something significant, but then also to help the people around me, right? So when all that stuff starts to align, that's really when you're in your sweet spot, but getting there, it is, it is really just work. Um, it is showing up. It is explore, it's exploring, it's playing, it's, it's uh, then kind of evaluating, like, was this something that really lit me up and I'm passionate about? Was this something that, that you know, was, was good as far as the execution or is there room for something to grow? So I think it's this very fluid type of thing, but you have to be engaged in the process. It's not something that you just trip over. Uh, it's not something that's delivered to you, but really it's almost like an uncovering. Uh, and for me, I had to realize that so much of what I had set up for expectation was around you know, um, this, this per picture perfect type of thing, photorealism, and then even design, right? Design principles where everything's pixel perfect. And there was yet this part of me that was like, I'm a mess. Like I like splatter marks. I like loose flowy lines. I like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. It makes me feel good. And that's the stuff I'm drawn to. So why not like embrace that rather than resist that? And that's when I found that I started to move away from frustration and really more into a sense of play and excitement and joy. Uh, the more that I learned about myself in that capacity and the more that I pushed into it, then the more comfortable I got with it, the more confident I got with it, the more that I showed up. Long answer to say, yeah, I mean, really it is putting the work in, but also allowing yourself freedom to play and experiment, you know, and assess. Have check-in points with yourself every so often to figure out, am I on the right track? Is this right? Is this good? Do I need to just keep pushing through or do I need to pivot? No, I think fun is a big part of it. I think I lost a lot of my, you know, even creative writing mm -hmm. sense over the years because once I started taking client work for direct response copy, it was just very, almost very mechanical Yeah, because the end goal was to sell something. It wasn't to create beautiful writing. It was just to sell things. And when I went through this creative process of writing, you know, this book, I felt like I was trying to reuse a muscle Mm -hmm. I hadn't worked out in years and years. And my editor, Karen Anderson was like, Hey, this is really good information. It has no heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, I'm trying, I'm like the tin man trying to find the heart again. <laughs> and I looked back on early posts, blog posts, you know, that's another reason to create just cause it's kind of a, an archive, yeah. you know, it's an archive of your creativity. And I go back to blog posts that I wrote four or five years ago or, you know, posts that I wrote within the last couple of years that were very, very uh, heart centered because they were about personal things and they weren't about educating or they weren't about, you know, selling things. And I was like, oh, that's somewhere in there, but I'm just not using it very often mm -hmm. because so much of my work had become marketing and sales and it yeah. was creative in its own right. But I love what you said about you're not really going to express a lot of your, your creative muscle through doing client work. Yeah. Um, I love that. And nor um, is that, yeah. nor is that usually the place, the, the appropriate place to do that. Right. Because mm -hmm. your clients are hiring you to achieve a certain goal for them. And that's not the place for you to all of a sudden say, well, this is how I feel about this. or this is, you know, my opinion on whatever. <laughs> and, um, and so you need, you know, I encourage all creative people, you know, especially those who are in a creative uh, full-time job someplace, or they're doing that for, for their career 
to make sure that you have, yes, the client stuff, but also make sure you have passion projects. Because often it's the passion projects that really light you up and that's where you have breakthrough. Then you can bring that back over to your client work a lot of times and say, ooh, I'm excited about this again now. I, I, and that soul sucking feeling is not as much there because I have some place to put that passion and that drive. Yeah, it's funny because when I started my blog and my podcast, I was still working full time in my, my regular day job. Yeah. So this was my passion project. Mm -hmm. And it helped me do my job as a marketer at work much better. And then once it became a main thing, I didn't have any passion projects anymore because then I would just, you know, spend the rest of my time working. Right. Um, so that's, that's really interesting that you, you say that about passion projects. I'm finding that totally unrelated things are what inspire me now with mm. my work. Like, you know, go exercise or go work out. I love the, I love documenting things. Oftentimes I'll use Instagram sort of as a gallery of inspiration or almost like a Pinterest board. I know some people do that with Pinterest, Pinterest boards and you start pinning things that are very inspiring to them and just look back through them. One of the things that we did recently, I want to make sure that everyone knows about this. You created these Instagram templates mm -hmm. that anyone who's a personal brand can use. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. So, you know, graphic design, like I said, is, is my background and that's um, something I'm very passionate about still. And you know, when we're in the middle of COVID and things are shifting and clients, you know, retaining clients are calling and being like, Hey, you know, we got to press pause and mm -hmm. it causes you to reassess some things. Right. And, and I always say it's an opportunity um, to figure out what's possible. Um, that's how I tend to try to approach it rather than, Oh, great. Now we can't, or this isn't happening, but what does this make possible? Right. So leaning into that. And I said, there are still a lot of needs out there. Um, there are still some very real needs that people have in, in making content. That's not slowing down. If anything, that's speeding mm -hmm. up because people have more time um, to be able to dedicate to some of that. Or, or they're seeing like, hey, I finally need to, to harness that drive to make sure that I start creating these things that I've said that I've wanted to do for a long time. And so with that content creation comes the need for how is this going to look? How am I going to be able to position this in such a way that it's engaging and looks professional? And so I set out to make these, these Canva templates, basically, uh, you know, geared around personal brands and podcasting. And I have a few other ones that are more niche markets um, that are, you know, the pet industry and health and wellness yoga. But all these templates basically give you the ability to plug in your messaging, change your brand colors if you have that, and you know, very quickly get in there, get the stuff that you need and then export some graphics so that you're off to the races. Um, and so, you know, that's the other thing I've learned on, on my journey is really asking the question of like, okay, so how can I help the people around me? What are the needs? And even if it's something that I wouldn't necessarily have thought of, because I'll be honest with you, right? As a graphic designer, like Canva, it's almost like the dirty word, right? It's like, yeah. ooh, that's the thing that's like killing our industry. You know, um, it's dumbing things down. It's making people think that they can just get in there and do it yourself with everything. You know, same thing happened with photography, the same thing, you know, I mean, this happens within industries and you, you can have the, the stance of like, I'm putting a flag in the ground and saying, no, I'm not going to go near that thing. And I'm just going to will it away or try to make sure that you shoot for enough high, high paying clients who aren't going to deal with that kind of stuff. Or you can say, Hey, this is an opportunity that I can embrace and figure out how to serve more people um, and get over a little bit maybe of the ego, get over a little of the pride, right? And the whole thing of like, I went to art school, darn it, you know, I have a degree and it was expensive and now I'm, you know. So in, in the end, really it just becomes something that's another product that I can offer that's at a different price point and maybe um, more of an introductory price point for some people who have a very real need that I can help solve that problem mm -hmm. for them. So, um, these templates are, you know, a great way to be able to do that. Well, yeah, I've, I've bought them and I've bought them for a ton of my students. And uh, so those of you who are listening, if you're doing social media at all, you're putting things online and you're struggling with the design aspect of it. I'm not a designer. Uh, I bought these templates from Mike and I, I recommend you guys check them out. And we'll have a link right here in the show notes uh, where you can grab them or you there's a link on mikekim.com forward slash store and we'll just yeah. uh, refer you all over to them. Mike, dude, this was really helpful. I, I don't get a chance to talk a lot about creative processes with people. So this is, uh, this was a lot of fun. And uh, once the book comes out, uh, I'll have to 
have you back on and and uh I'll just brain dump everything I went through writing that book because that was crazy. Yeah. Uh that was like it, you talked about, you know, starting small, but then also you have this thing where I'm like, okay, I know this is gonna be a big thing, mm-hmm. like that I have to work on and I want it to be a masterpiece. And there's like a lot there. And I think once I had the final product in hand, I looked at just bounce ideas off you and stuff like that just because yeah. there's a lot there so dude thank you so much for uh, joining us today everyone should check out mike's work his creative chats podcast all the links will be in the show notes and basically definitely pick up those canva templates uh for sure mike thanks so much for joining us thank you mike it's my pleasure yeah man talk soon 